Um, welcome to Empower 24. My name is Josh Cranfill. It's my pri pri privilege and pleasure to present to you from a handful to hands-free, making equipment maintenance easier to manage. Here at QuickBase, we have a tagline, all together now. It's a brand identity statement, and I think an apt one. It's meant to be a metaphor for our team who we work together. And for our software, we bring different systems together into one. I'll come back to that throughout this presentation. In the meantime, um, I wanted to tell you a little story. So years ago, I was visiting a large uh, food manufacturer in California. About 10 of us sat in a room and mapped out their entire maintenance process. I can actually still see the whiteboard today, and it became huge and, and very involved. The plant was pretty interesting because downtime was significant to this plant. They could actually run 24 hours. They had enough uh, business to run a three shift day. And as we looked into this process, we figured out that a downtime event took a minimum of three hours to fix. The average was closer to four and a half hours. And if they were missing a part, there might be a machine down for several days, which had a direct effect on revenue. Their process as it stood for the most part, and I'll, I'll leave out a few details was that the operator would would had a standard practice to troubleshoot the machine for 10 minutes. Then they would flip a switch for an and on signal. An and on signal is something that everybody in the plant can see that's a light that's kind of uh, telling you, hey, there's a problem over here. They would radio the maintenance manager and raise an alarm. The maintenance manager would print a work order, get on the radio, find a technician somewhere across the 1 million square foot plant. And that might have been the closest technician or it might have been the farthest technician away. It might have been a technician that was trained on that piece of equipment or it might not have been. Um, so obviously mistakes were made. Once the technician responded, there ensued a long walk back to the machine. Again, it was a million square foot plant where he or she would troubleshoot the machine. Upon diagnosis, which usually would take you know only a couple of minutes, the technician would consult a physical manual and these manuals were all over the plant floor. Um, once they consulted the manual, they would access SAP from a terminal and have to go through several screens to see whether a part was in access or not. Once they saw the part, they were able to order the part, walk over to the tool crib, uh, go get the part, fix the machine, fill out the paperwork order. And then um, later on, usually at the end of the shift, they would fill out uh, some information in what was called a line event downtime system. <clears throat> Tool time on that process was usually somewhere from 45 to 60 minutes, but the actual time gathering information was a minimum of two hours. So as I sat there with this group of people, this was a really eye-opening uh, and astonishing thing. Um, long story short, and I, it was a very long story short, we were able to plumb all those workflows into one dynamic app. So the downtime tagging was immediate. That was automated and immediate. You, the operator or the technician only had to fill out a couple of things. The work order was assigned to the closest technician or the most appropriate automatically. Parts requisitions were in there, work instructions, schematics, dispatch, and asset information. In the end, the average downtime was cut by more than 60% in that plant, which directly led to more revenue for that company. And in the years since then, I've noticed the theme abounds throughout the entire manufacturing ecosystem, and in many field services situations as well. Um, most manufacturers are what we call legacy environments. They don't have, people don't have the right information and the right tools. They need to optimize maintenance and the equipment is old. It's not, um, it's not necessarily all 2024 equipment. Traditional CMMS systems are very expensive um, and they aren't always tailored to what we would describe as your ideal business process. And sometimes those processes don't even exist. So in the future, most shop floors, they're gonna be like cars are today. They're gonna to be telling you before they're about to break. So a vibration system sensor might go off and it might tell you, hey, I'm vibrating too much. This thing needs to be handled or else it's gonna go down. Uh, it might tell you it needs an oil change. It might even, and in some situations, tell you that a person is in the wrong place and it'll hit the brakes. Um, so that's the future. And although predictive maintenance like that is, is inevitable at some point, how do we get there? And I think from an executive level, most people automatically, they go towards, hey, we need analytics or we need automation. 
So my question for you is, should we go out and get every sensor known to man? And, you know, should we provision all of our equipment to become IoT devices and run linear regressions and hire an AI team and, and run Apache aggregation services in the cloud? And obviously the answer is no, because you can spend millions of dollars trying to do that uh, and not necessarily get more than 20% of the outcome that you're looking for. So the road to predictive maintenance actually has to be prepared. Um, and, and I think in a, in a fairly inexpensive way, it can be prepared uh, just through people process and, and a little bit of technology to manage your workflow. It's about getting organized. It's about tagging data. It's creating data to someday be able to feed into really smart algorithms that are very accurate and, and, and enact uh, good changes on your shop floor. Um, but 80% of your journey to get to that point is actually in very simple uh, concepts and workflows. So let me get into the challenge and the solution a little bit before I get into the demo. Um, first of all, most of our ecosystems, like the ones that I was describing before, are built through and managed through disparate systems of record. So I mentioned ERP and document management and other things before. Those disparate systems of record often dictate that people will have to go to three or four or five or six different systems to execute one critical workflow. You also have a diminishing tribal knowledge, and this is something I've heard more and more and more since I would say the, the COVID days. They're, they call it the silver tsunami, but um, you don't have 30 year machine operators anymore. They're just not as common. You don't have 30 year technicians. And those folks back in the day, they would know every machine, they would know it like their back of their hand and they could teach the new people uh, how to be just as effective or give them very clear advice. We actually have to bridge that gap with technology now because it's a much more transient workforce. There's a lot of reactive work because of that. And I kind of made up a term here, overall equipment ineffectiveness. If we even know our OEE, it is probably not our best KPI in the plant and this kills productivity. Part of that's because of a lot of paper, Excel, duplicate data entry. Um, and frankly, this, this leads directly to low visibility. You can't necessarily see what's going on in a plant in real time. And the solution, regardless of the technology that you choose, is to have one system for dynamic work management. Now, that's one of our catchphrases. It doesn't necessarily need to be quick base, but we think we're the best at it. Um, you need technology driving processes, process adherence and priorities with a younger, more transient workflows, workforce. They are ready for technology and they're going to adhere to your processes better when you make it simple for them. Leading from processes into proactive planning and, and good, solid, reactive emergency maintenance procedures uh, has to be part of the solution. You have to start planning and then evaluating how you did against that plan. And then, then finally drawing attention back to this one thing, because it's so important. You have to bring your ERP data, your document management, your machine events, your historian access, and all of your asset attributes into one place. Even if they exist in different systems, we have integration capabilities that are, are going to allow you to plumb those into one uh, different system. The impact in your organization, of course, you're gonna, going to, to have an improved overall equipment effectiveness immediately, but there's also some tertiary impact. So you look at that younger workforce and you want to enable them. You want a great, you, you want to foster a great culture where people want to be there and they're, they're giving you ideas and you're constantly and continuously improving. And at the end of the day, we all want to produce better products at a lower cost. So before I jump into the last slide, I wanted to point out one thing that Bill Gates said that has been strewn all over the internet that is so true. And it's that the first rule of technology and business is that if you apply automation to an already efficient process, you're gonna get that efficiency magnified. But the second rule and probably the most, most important one and should have gone first is that if you apply automation to an inefficient operation, you will magnify the inefficiency and chaos ensues. I've seen this a million times. I've seen a lot of money wasted in this in this place. So how do we start? What do we do? The way to bring them together is actually right at our fingertips. And it's the cheapest way to make 80% of the impact that you need to make on your overall equipment effectiveness, your uptime, your throughput. And it's people, process, and technology. 
So first of all, if I break down people, your people is the workforce. Uh, it's the backbone of your workforce in giving them the right training, the right mindset, the right tools, the right information at the right time is critical. You wanna move them from reactive to proactive. They are very important and you want to collaborate. So it's very important even when looking at uptime processes or computerized maintenance management systems and everything else, that this is a cross-functional effort. So folks from reliability, from production, from quality and management need to be involved. Second, I'll talk about processes. And it's important to streamline these maintenance processes to ensure that you have visibility and efficiency. You wanna map out your workflows. You wanna identify bottlenecks and implement standardized procedures everywhere. If a procedure or a practice does not exist, people can't stick to it. Second, you wanna democratize that tribal knowledge. As I mentioned before, it just doesn't exist at the same scale as we had before. Third, you want to use your data, enrich it, and close the loop. And let me draw attention real quick to enriching the data. Enriching the data is so important because time series data, which is machine data, doesn't really tell you anything unless you can actually correlate it to an outcome. So for instance, if a downtime event occurs, you want to have your operator explain that downtime event accurately. And it can't be with 187 codes in JD Edwards and they always pick their favorite one. You have to provide a simple process for data be, to be enriched and uh, so that you can come back and close the loop. And finally, you have to organize your activities. You want to plan, you want to execute, you want to adjust that plan. Technology I view as an enabler. A, a, a good friend of mine told me that years ago and I, I it resonated every cent, ever since. But what I'm talking about first and foremost before advanced analytics and um, any sort of AI can actually be useful is workflow technology. So we have developed a computerized maintenance management system that I'll show you in a second. I think it's also important to start dipping your toe into sensor data a little bit. We have some incredible um, partners that help you implement IoT sensors and especially on critical to revenue assets, these things can actually pay you back pretty quickly. You wanna start getting used to it a little bit you can consume that data in QuickBase or in another system and, and it'll be useful for you. But it's too expensive to do that to everything. And finally, you wanna prioritize and assign work efficiently. Right person, right time, right information, a well-organized dashboard ensures that maintenance activities are executed quickly, they are executed correctly as well. So now let's get into the demo and we'll, we'll see the tool for itself. All right, so here we have our CMMS application and I think I could overwhelm you with this demo. So we're going to go to three or four different places. We're going to pull out a few principles. Um, and if you ever want to follow up, please get a hold of us. <clears throat> I'm actually going to start not with some of the workflow activity, but some of the end results and the executive dashboards <clears throat> and the KPIs that you will ultimately want to see as a result of this CMMS. So if I pop into executive dashboards, there's a few people in my organization that care about this stuff. Well, everybody cares about it, but there's a few people that manage at this level, right? Um, I wanna draw attention to this because the way you collect data and QuickBase is an incredibly powerful relational database that allows you to make millions of calculations in a fraction of a second. You have to set it up properly um, and match it to your ideal workflow but at the end of that, you're, you know you're producing good data that you can actually turn into. So data should turn into information, which is data in context, which should turn into an insight, which should, should turn into an action, right? So as I look at this bottom KPI here, I have planned versus actual maintenance cost. And as somebody that owns the budget, right? This is a different role within the organization. This is maybe at the VP level. I'm looking at my planned cost versus my actual maintenance cost over time. And looking at it in a clear visual allows me to actually immediately know what to put attention on. Those ones that have an actual cost that's much higher than the plan cost, of course, those come first. And Pareto's and little data points like this really help you make those decisions quickly and accurately because you can trust the data. Uh, you can also drill down and, and find out more. On the top here, I have a maintenance backlog. This is uh, this is by property, right? We have different areas and I have a workforce maybe that flows from area to area. 
So if I want to look at my backlog, this allows me to understand how many work orders that I have open or service requests that I have open, um, what's the severity of them, what's the type of them, and so uh, and so forth, so that I can look at this aggregation and the primary decision that I'm going to make from here is to allocate manpower in a different way. So I might send more people to one site or to one emphasis one week um, versus the next week based on that backlog and based on that workload. Looking at things at this level rather than maybe in an Excel sheet or finger in the wind allows you to make accurate decisions uh, based on data that you know is good. Jumping over to the KPIs, this for sure can be an overwhelming screen. Uh, a good KPI though, tells me exactly what I need to focus my attention on within three or four seconds, because I'm in it every day, right? So uh, this is a dashboard, it, it's based, and I have different ones throughout this presentation that I can show you. They're all based on different personas that care about this stuff or have different job responsibilities. As a maintenance manager, you might look at this one and look at your late started work orders. You might look at pending material work orders, uh, service requests, late finish work orders, find out what's going on there. Do I have a personnel problem? Do I have an availability of labor problem, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And as, you're, as you get really close to these things, a screen like this becomes way less overwhelming. But I want to draw your attention to a couple of the little guys over here. The MTBF, which means mean time between failure and mean time to repair MTTR. Um, I draw attention to those not because they're the most important thing to be looking at, but it's very important to draw the mean time to repair back to how you collected the data in the first place, because if you don't collect the data in the first place correctly, you're actually going to be in trouble, right? You, you're going to be working off of bad data, making bad plans out of, out of bad data, and uh, probably not making the best decisions. So let me pop over to service requests, and then I promise I'll tie a bow on, on MTBF and MTTR. So I jump over to service requests, and immediately I have some quick action buttons over here that can take me where I want to go. Uh, but sometimes you might prefer to look at it in a list view. So I have my resolved service requests up here. I have work in progress. I have waiting, and I have raised. And it looks like I've been on vacation because I have 48 service requests that have been that have been raised. But uh, maybe we'll do a little cleanup for this guy. So if I look at um, a work order that was generated today or a service request rather, this is something that I'm actually as the maintenance manager going to have to evaluate and then turn into uh, a work order if the if the work's actually going to get assigned. The service request is not necessarily the end all um, of the of the situation. That's somebody raised their hand like I described at that that company before and they said, hey, we have a problem over here on this piece of equipment and it needs attention. So as the maintenance manager, I'm going to click next. And this is going to represent a bunch of pre-populated input that has to do with the type of asset, the type of severity. This one's severity one asset out of service. This is a really big deal. My SLA is four hours. The problem reason is erratic output. I'm gonna evaluate this situation and see if it makes sense and start thinking about which is my best technician to get out there and, and, and beat the clock on this four hour time. That's clicking. So now I'm going to actually create a work order. I've created a couple of here. Maybe I create a new work order because I have some new information. And this information actually can come from a scan of the machine. I can I can place it in here for the for the um, purpose of this demo. I just decided to to place it in here. Work order subtype. It could be emergency repair or it could be replace. In this case, it's repair. I can put a small description that either came from the operator or came from my assessment of it. Um, I can tag the asset information and make sure that's correct, the job site name. And all of this data later on is going to be used uh, for reporting my asset group. And I'm going to come down here to the failure information. This failure information can be filled out by an operator. It can be filled out by me if I know the information. Uh, it can also be pre-populated. So sometimes you have a data historian or some sort of IoT setup where failure codes are going to um, uh, be generated automatically. And then that takes you back to that enrich word that I talked about, where if you get receive a failure code and you verify that that's a legitimate fa failure code, 
you immediately want to enrich that data with context to turn it into information. Otherwise, it's useless to the team. So um, looking at the time here, this was raised, let's say, at, on today at uh, 10 a.m. My plan start date has to be today because this is an emergency work order on a critical asset. And I'm going to say that's, yeah, 12 a.m. My plan end date, I'm going to say is 4 p.m. because that's a reasonable hour to plan for it. So when you when you think back to those two little metrics that I was talking about, the meantime between failure and the meantime to repair. Uh, this is how you get the granularity of data to actually get a an accurate KPI and start making decisions off of it. You can pre-populate these based on timestamps and things dif in, in, in different areas of the app, but later I'm going to actually come, come back and, and place in the actual start date, which is maybe based on a button that the operator or the technician is going to place in the work order, and the actual end date, and that's going to start to generate an accurate mean time to repair. And I can plan better when I have that information and I can trust it. So clicking next here, I can add a technician. You can cross-reference these technicians with uh, training matrices, for instance, or availability matrices, who's logged in today, who's, who's, who's homesick, uh, who has the best training, who's the most mature rep, who's the closest rep. You can put logic behind that button in kind of whatever way that you want. So I'll click next. I have all kinds of work order spare records. That's for spare parts. And I can add any documentation or uh, whatever I need to do. So, so I, th there I went ahead and created that work order. And now I'm going to jump back home. And my home page is kind of a nice place because maybe first part of the day, I want to take this view. And it's got emergency work orders. I have three today. Three is a really big deal. I've got them time blocked. I've got them assigned to people. And I can drill into those and find out what the heck is going on with them. I have a work order approval trail, a planner trail, labor requirements, material requirements, an audit trail, and help resources like machine schematics and documentation and everything else. So there I have an end-to-end -end workflow where I'm giving everybody they uh, everybody involved what they need to, to execute the right business process. And finally, I want to come back to your asset information. It's so important in any sort of machine critical um, maintenance type of situation that you have your assets properly tagged and split up into uh, asset categories and hierarchies. We call them hierarchies. So here I have each of my assets. If I click into them, they have information that tells me what they're, uh, what's important about them. It tells me attribute information. It might tell me the asset group or the system it's part of, the building that it's part of and so forth. I can look at the different inventory and cost, the spare parts, the tasks that are associated to that asset right now. I can look at any maintenance repairs or any service requests that are open on it or that are closed on it recently. Uh, and that gives me a really good idea because sometimes you're looking at maintenance from a service request perspective, but that can be reactionary. And other times you need to look at maintenance from an asset perspective. Am I taking care of this asset? Is my planning going well? Are we executing against that plan? And are my assets gonna, gonna stay up and running? Because that's my ultimate job. And finally, I wanted to show you the view of uh, what a, a technician might actually want to, to have as their view in this CMMS. So in this case, and, and by the way, we can do indoor maps as well. We have a really cool partner that, that does indoor map, map schematics and you can do the same thing as if you're on a big tall ladder, you know, looking over your shop floor and you can see what is going on in each part of the business and how things are producing and how your work orders are going. In this case, I'm a floating maintenance guy. I'm a technician that goes from place to place to place. So I've got three work orders over here. I've got four and I've got 22 over there in uh, looks like in Western Pennsylvania. And I have this nice Kanban view that tells me what's important to me right now. I've got these requested work orders. I can shift that over to approved. I can shift this one over to approved. There's re rejected work orders and all kinds of different things that allow me to understand that I'm doing the right thing. I've got the right information to execute my job. 
uh, right now to the very best of, of my ability and that I'm not missing anything. And that's the whole idea behind this app and behind really any digital transformation that you take part in is the sense that I have the right information, it's the right time, and all of my information is correct. Plumbing these things into one system all together now <clears throat> allows you for allows you to not only increase your OEE and and create a better culture that you're fostering, but it also allows you to just produce a better product at a lower rate and become a more profitable company. So I'll I'll wrap with that. We're gonna have a QA session afterwards. Um, I appreciate you so much uh, listening to this and uh, thank you very much. Looking forward to the QA. Oh,